Hi, my name is Jonathan, and this is a level one bowspring practice that focuses on the knees. The knees are the six key area in the 10 key areas of the system of bowspring, but there's more to the knees than just bending the knees or pulsing the knees. In fact, there's a sequence in an order of events. First, the knees bend forward, then turn inward slightly, then up, and finally outward. And the most recent development was the turning of the knees inward slightly as a tool to enhance the groins to move down and back to assist in moving the low back inward and upward. So we'll emphasize all four of those in practice today. And please take a tall seat in hero's position. And once you arrive there, grab your knees and lift them up. And then lift your hands into globe hands position. And bend your elbows out to the sides and broaden through your upper back. And press your fingertips into each other and charge the muscles in your arms. Although the emphasis in today's practice will be on the knees, which invariably is assisted with the feet and ultimately leads to results in the pelvis and the low back. You must never forget the overriding principle, the keyest area of them all, which is the radiant heart, the fulling, the filling and broadening of the rib cage on all sides. Allow your outer elbows to lift so that the shoulder blades widen, lift your chin, but make your pelvis heavy and dense. Then take two deep cycles of breath. Breathe in fully and exhale completely. One last time. And then reach your arms forward, lift your hips and touch your hands down into all fours position. If you used a block, just place it off to the side of your mat. Coming here in all fours position, push the hands down and use that to lift the rib cage up. With your toes pointed behind you, pull the feet closer in towards your knees so that the front of your ankles lift. Then push your knees forward and turn the knees in slightly. So pushing the knees forward in this case is just down into the floor. Turning the knees in will encourage the inner thighs to go back to assist in dropping the low back a little bit more towards the floor. So as the low back moves down, notice if the rib cage moves down as well. That's a sunken feeling. So instead, keep the belly low, but lift the ribs high using the pressing of your hands. Then push your knees forward towards your hands and allow the hips to move back slightly. And finally, push the knees out to the side and feel how the glutes get stronger and more engaged as you pull the heels in towards the midline. Now, on an inhale, lift your left leg out to the side and dome your left hand. Open leg position in all fours. In all fours, pull the knee forward, sit the hips back, open the leg a little higher out to the side. And one last test, if you'd like to challenge yourself, lift your left hand up the back of your head. Then lower your hand, lower your knee, and switch sides. Sit the hips back, lift your right leg out to the side, dome your right hand, pull your knee forward, push the arm straight, make your rib cage lighter so it doesn't sink down, push the left knee out to the side as you sit the hips back towards the left heel. Pull the right knee energetically forward into an imaginary resistance. An option to lift your hand, cup the back of your head, push your left arm straight. Then lower your hand, lower your knee, tuck your toes under, and lift up into crouching cat position. In crouching cat position, bring your chin over your wrists, push your arms straight. If the legs don't bend at all, what can tend to happen is moves into a rounded position. In classic downward facing dog, 
pushes you all the way into a rounded position. So keeping the gaze between the hands and the chin in line with your wrists, bend your knees just enough that you can get a tilt up of your sit bones, turn the knees in a little bit to encourage that even more. Push the arms straight so there's a fullness in your ribs, and then now push the knees out to the side. Work the legs a little bit straighter while maintaining the arch in the low back. Then slowly step forward towards the front. And if you'd like, you can use a block. Pause, fingertips or hands to a block in a forward fold position. In this forward fold position, push the knees forward, turn the knees in and encourage the hips to move further back, the inner thighs to move further back. Then lift the knees up to enhance the glute engagement and push your knees out to the sides. On your next inhale, slowly rise up and place the hands to the knees. The advantage that starting on hands and knees had was that you had something for the knees to push into. So here in recovery position, you have the same thing, which is the hands. So first principle of the knees, knees bend forward. And more than just knees bend, because some of you are flexible enough that if you bent your knees in a hyperextension, that's still a bent knee. So knees bend forward, and as the knees go forward, you can move the top of the thigh bones back. Then turn the knees in slightly, encourage the inner thighs to go back, and the groins to go even further back till there's an arch in the low back. And too much arch is too much arch if you also squeeze your shoulder blades together. So maintain a fullness through your upper back. Then find a lift up of the knees, knees pushing upward. And then the last one is pushing the knees out to the side, which is a little different. The knees turn in and then the knees push out, which means the front of the knees move away from each other just as much as the back of the knees. So it's not a rotation of the knees. And then from there, just even feel, is this, is this strong? Is this lit up? Am I engaged? Then reach your arms in front of you, go globe hands position, and just sway a little from side to side. The advantage of keeping the knees slightly bent is you remain in a dynamic position of readiness. Now, weight your right foot, lift your left heel, push the foot forward, move your hips a little bit further back, and then lift the leg into the air and take a little step back into a high lunge position. In the high lunge position, place both hands to your knees. Knees bend forward, knees turn in. Growings move down and back. Arch forms in the low back. Dome the hands, fill into the rib cage, lift the knees up, drop the back heel to hover, and then finally push the knees outward so you feel a strength and a power in your glutes. Then go back to globe hands position and pulse a little bit up and down. From there, push off your back foot, lift it into the air propeller pose, propeller with hands to knees. With your hands to your knees, push the knees forward, move the hips back, place the hands to the outside of the knees and push your knees out to the side and use that to lift the glutes up. Then slowly step your foot forward, reach the arms forward in front of you, go globe hands position again, weight your left foot and then lift your right heel, push your foot forward move your hips back, then lift your foot and step it back. Just a short little step back so that the back knees forward of your hips and then use your hands as a wall to push into something to press back against. Move the groins down and back, turn the knees in. As you turn the knees in, encourage the low back to move in, fill through your rib cage, Drop the back heel close towards the floor, then hands in front of you and find a little bit of a pulse. It could be a, a move forward and back or a move up and down. 
then push off your back foot, lift it into the air, tilt slightly forward, place both hands to your knees, push your knees forward, move your groins down and back, place your right hand to the outside of your knee, push your knee out to the side, and use that action to lift the glutes up stronger. The leg doesn't have to go all the way out to the side, but the action is there. Pulse the left leg, and then eventually step your foot to meet your right, both arms in front of you, bend your elbows ecstasy arms position, lift your wrists and elbows equally, and arc over to the left. Tilt your left ear towards your shoulder. As you tilt your ear to your shoulder, turn the knees in, move the hips back, push your knees out, lift the right side rib cage higher up. Then rise up and go over to the other side. Lean over to the right, lift the left side rib cage. Sit low, push knees forward, knees in, knees up, and knees out as you arc and lean over. Then rise up again, hold on to hands Hercules clasp, weight your right foot, and step your left foot back. Stepping your foot back, turn your right foot in, and place both hands to the knees. With both hands to the knees, turn the knees in, move the groins back, lift the knees up, and push the knees out. Then tilt forward, come down fingertips position. With your hands in fingertips position, cup the back of your head right, push your head into your hand, and then as you do that, lift the left hand to hover away from the floor. Then go hand down, hand down, and switch. Cup the back of your head left, push the top of your head forward, lift your right hand to hover, then to come up, right hand behind your head, slowly rise, turn your left foot out, turn the right foot in slightly, and then place the left forearm to your thigh, side coil position. In side coil position, bend your right knee forward and turn it in slightly. When you turn the knee in, it gives you the advantage of broadening and widening your left glute. So as the knee turns in, encourage the widening, lift the knee up, and then finally push the knee out energetically. Once you have that, tilt ear to shoulder, stretch the side body, keep the left arm strong with your hand in seed position, so the biceps and the triceps tone. Then on an inhale, slowly rise all the way up. Place the hands to the hips, turn your feet to face forward. Walk the feet closer in, and just to encourage and enhance that action you did in side coil, weight your left foot, lift your right leg into the air. Then tilt forward slightly and open the knee out to the side. Place your hands to your knees. And this is open leg position, just like all fours, but now in a standing position. Lower your foot down and switch sides, taking the left leg out to the side. And at this point, just feeling the position. In particular, notice the more you take the leg out to the side, the more narrow the back of the pelvis gets. And when the pelvis gets narrow in the back, there's more of a rounded shape to the low back. Lower your foot and go back to the first side. So instead of opening the right leg all the way out to the side, bring the knee down and turn it in a little bit. The knee bends forward, rotates in. With your hand to the outside of your knee, push your knee out into that resistance and then use that to widen your right butt. Who doesn't want a bigger butt? And then once you've got the bigger butt, left arm forward, leg out to the side, option to hold the back of your thigh, work your leg straighter, and pulse your left leg up and down about four or five times. Then lower your foot and switch sides. Take the left leg out to the side, bring the knee in, 
rotate it in, broaden and widen by pushing your knees forward, then push the knee out into the resistance of your hand and open the leg out to the side. As you open the leg out to the side, hold the back of your thigh, reach your right arm straight forward, work your left leg straighter, and then pulse your right leg up and down. Then lower your foot, open your feet wide, bend your knees, turn your right foot in so the heel goes out, and then reach your right arm straight forward in front of you. With the arm forward in front of you, reach, 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 and then like you're turning a key, turn your arm so the thumb points down, and use that to move the right sit bone way, way, way back as you stretch out. Push the arm, place forearm to your thigh, and then rise up again. Turn the heel in and switch sides. Turn the left heel out, bend the knee, reach the left arm out forward in front of you, right forearm to your thigh, move your hips back, broaden the left cheek, and then reach, 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 reach. Tilt right ear to right shoulder, stretch the arm long as the left butt cheek goes back. And then rise up again hands to knees, turn your right foot forward, place your forearm to your thigh, turn the left knee in, side coil position. And the advantage of having a hand to your knee is it gives you feedback. So without the hand, bend the knee forward, turn the knee in, lift the knee up, and push the knee out. Ear to shoulder, pulse a little bit forward and back, feeling the power and feeling the strength in your legs. Then push off your back foot and step forward. Separate the feet as wide as your mat. Place your hands to your knees. I found back when I used to practice with a block and put it between my legs. I just thought it was strange acting like a Pez dispenser. Um, that's number one. And number two, when you squeeze the block in, I found I was overstraining the muscles on the inner thighs and causing the uh, IT band to seize up a little bit and the psoas to, to strain quite a bit. So when I started pushing the knees out to the side, at the same time as moving the groins down and back, it was instant relief. Um, I was sold immediately through my own body. So now hinge forward. I'm using a block just because I have uh, not the most flexible of hamstrings. I would turn the knees in, move the groins back, try to get a little depression in the low back as there's a fullness through the rib cage and push the head forward as you work the legs straighter. Okay, then remove a block if you used it and step back to crouching cat position. So crouching cat, knees push forward, sit bones lift up, arms stay straight, strong. Then open your left leg out to the side, dome your left hand, bend the right knee, push the right knee out to the side, but keep your heel hugging in. Then left hand right, left foot down, and switch sides. Right leg out to the side, knee forward. Open the back of your knee, push your left arm straight. Then lower your foot, lower your hand, lower your knee, point your toes back, and then slowly move your hands back into a kneeling position. Rise up, pull the toes forward to your knees, but push your knees out to the sides. So the advantage of having the knees down is you have something to push out against. Cup the back of your head, lift your wrists, lift your elbows, sit back, and inhale, lift. Exhale, sit back, inhale, and lift.
Exhale, sit back. And inhale and lift. And then arms forward, touch fingers down, then touch elbows down. Move the knees back just a little bit, but lift the feet. Come more to the base of your thighs, push your forearms down, push your elbows down, lift the rib cage higher. As you push your knees forward towards your elbows, push your knees out to the sides and use that to get the glutes strong and engaged. Avoid the sinking of the chest down, keep the rib cage lifted, belly low, and then push the top of your head forward. And then lower your feet, rise up to your hands, lift your knees, turn your knees to the left, reach your right arm long, lie into side bow, lying into side bow, lift the left leg just to hover, and reach your left arm straight forward in front of you. So the knee bends forward, which is easy, because the knee's bent and not hyperextended. And then as the knee bends forward, turn the knee in slightly so the foot might get a little bit higher. As you do that with your left hand, lift and broaden your sit bone, then lift the knee up closer towards your face. From there, place your hand to the outside of your knee and push your knee up into the ceiling of your hand and feel how that will fire up and strengthen your gluteal muscles more. And then place your left hand in front of you, push back up into all fours and switch sides. Turn your knees to the right, lie onto your left side body, arm in front of you. Typically, if the leg were to just lift up, the back of the pelvis would narrow and close. So lift the knee to hover, push the knee forward, move the knee down slightly, and encourage the sit bone to get broader and wider in the back. Then push your knee up in towards your hand, both forward towards the, the face, that direction, and then also pushing the knee up towards the ceiling. And then swing both arms in front and up, roll onto your back, and wiggle your way to the center of your mat again. Open the hands slightly wider than the shoulders, push your head down, and broaden your rib cage. Then lift your feet to the height of your knees. As you push down with your head, lift your rib cage to hover, float momentarily. And then bring your ribs back down, hold on to your knees, allow your feet to drop towards your glutes. You push your knees up into your hands, and as you push the knees up into the hands, feel how the back of your pelvis gets heavier and your low back lifts slightly. Then keep hold of your right leg, lower your left foot flat, push the foot down, hold the back of your right thigh, and extend it up into the air. Push your thigh into your hands, bend your elbows out to the sides. And switch. Bend your right knee, foot down, and switch sides. Left leg up. Then bend the leg, slide your legs long, assimilation, posture that is welcoming to having the legs straighten. A great aspect of the level one practice is not doing as many postures and going at a slower pace for skill development purposes knowing that 
there is a lot of technique in this modality of practice. And as you practice daily or weekly, you'll find some new nugget of information, some enhanced skill that can compound onto previous knowledge. And like scaffolding that surrounds the construction of a tower, as the scaffolding is built higher and higher, so too can the tower of knowledge until it becomes so vast, so strong, so tall that eventually there is no scaffolding required. Take a deep breath in, and deep breath out. Reach your arms overhead, stretch your body long and in opposing directions, and then bend your knees, move your hips to the left, and drop your knees to the right. Roll to your side. Push down with your left hand and rise up to a seated position. Finishing globe hands, honoring the ending, acknowledging with deep gratitude the effort and time it took in to self practice, ultimately, self realization. Namaste.